Hi, I'm Scott Newton, the CEO of Audio Advice. Today's video is on the new Sony High Performance Laser Projector, the VPL VW 1025ES. I actually brought the projector home and tested it in my own theater, given that I had had the previous version to compare to. If you're looking for a relatively inexpensive projector, you can find videos at all price points at audioadvice.com. At $40,000, the VPL VW 1025ES is not cheap, but if you have the funds available, it is an incredible projector. Now let's get started. The VW1025 is a laser projector that boasts 2200 lumens. I tested this projector in my own theater, which has a 150 inch, 1.3 gain widescreen. In terms of processing, Sony modified the X1 processor from its top of the line televisions to create the X1 processor for projectors. This processor is totally cutting edge and is what really differentiates Sony's projectors from the pack. It is this processor that works the magic in converting the HDMI feed into the beautiful picture you see on the screen. Cheaper projectors often have really high lumens but terrible processing, so the picture and the colors don't look nearly as good. Sony has always been at the forefront of great processing, and the X1 is no exception. One of the biggest advantages of the X1 for projectors is contrast and light control. Let me explain a little bit more about HDR so you can understand how important Sony's new dynamic HDR enhancer is. HDR is short for high dynamic range. This technology actually came from digital photography where it was an effort to improve the contrast between the blackest blacks and the whitest whites. The goal of HDR is to ultimately deliver a better picture that is more lifelike. It is actually as big a jump as we saw going from high definition to 4K. Almost all new movies incorporate HDR, plus both Netflix and Prime Video have tons of HDR enabled content. HDR gives us a better picture by enabling us to see smaller degrees of changes in brightness. With SDR, a snow-covered field may look like one seamless white area, but with HDR, you can see the fine highlights in shadows and levels of white. Colors also show more super delicate gradations and become more richer and lifelike. Basically, everything looks more natural. With HDR, there's metadata embedded in the video stream telling the display how to handle the image. These instructions are assuming the video display is capable of a certain amount of light output. Light output is measured in foot lamberts or nits, with one nit being the light level of a single candle. The HDR content commercial movie theaters receive is based on a very specific nit spec of 106. HDR for consumer products is based on a range of nits from 1000 to 4000 and in some rare cases 10,000. Most HDR enabled consumer televisions can deliver this level of light output or close to it. Front projectors cannot even get close with most able to produce light output in the range of 100 to 200 nits. The result on a front projector is a super dark picture that's not even close to what the video producer intended us to see. Most people with traditional projectors have found themselves constantly turning up the brightness and contrast on their projectors to counteract how dark their HDR content is. This leads to a suboptimal picture, but also really way over brightens SDR content. Or you might set up your projector to be somewhere in the middle, then both your HDR and SDR content suffers. Sony attacks this problem multiple ways. As each frame of the video content travels through the X1 processor, it is analyzing every single part of that frame to determine which parts contain dark and light levels. What the Sony Dynamic HDR Enhancer does in simple terms is to enhance the bright areas and in the dark areas, pull down the black levels beyond what the HDR data is calling for. To do this on a frame by frame level takes an extremely fast processor. What really excites me is the dynamic HDR enhancer is not fixed at one level. There are three levels of magnitude, which means you can apply this to your screen size and screen gain. Those with very large screens and less nits will want to set it on the high setting, whereas people with smaller screens will prefer the low or medium setting. In my case, with a 150 inch 2.4 screen, the medium setting is optimal. 
What is also pretty cool is the fact you now have separate settings for SDR and HDR. On many screens, you may not need to use full laser power on SDR, but will use it for HDR. These adjustments are found under Cinema Black Pro, where you can have different settings for dynamic control, laser light output, and the Sony Contrast Enhancer system. It's important to pause here and understand that this means there's basically a dual contrast control engine that includes dynamic laser control and the advanced iris working together to give you the best contrast possible. Being able to adjust this separately for SDR and HDR is a huge feature. Ideally, I would like for Sony to have a way to input the actual foot Lamberts or nits of an individual setup and have the processor adjust based on that data. But for now, this is a massive improvement for HDR content. And the new X1 processor for projectors offers vast improvements on non-HDR program material as it is much better at upsampling the signal to 4K than the previous version. The 1025 also has built-in lens memory so you can do a full 2.4 widescreen and it will zoom the image to fill the screen, then zoom it back down for regular 16x9 TV content with just the push of a button. My theater is set up exactly like this. The 1025 will also seamlessly work with an aftermarket Panamorph lens should you really want to go the extra mile to get every bit of light for widescreen viewing. If you're trying to decide whether to do a traditional 16x9 or 2.4 widescreen setup, go over to audiodevice.com and look at the buyer's guides under home theater. There we have a really good guide explaining widescreen and pretty much everything else home theater related, along with videos of home theater installs and an inspiration gallery. The VW1025 uses three true 4K SXRD imagers delivering 8.8 .8 million pixels. This is an important point because you will find that many less expensive projectors use 4K marketing language but do not produce a true 4K image. With the Z Phosphor laser light, you get 20,000 hours versus a typical lamp that is under 2,000. The 1025 also uses a very high-end lens. For those of you who are into cameras, you know that the quality of the lens makes a huge difference. The Arc F lens in the 1025 has an 18-piece all-glass design that produces an incredible picture from edge to edge. You'll see inky blacks with more tones, textures, and vibrant colors than on other brands. Motion Flow is a Sony tech that's been around for a while, but it is amazing how well it works. On many projectors, when the scene moves really fast across the screen, you see some jerkiness or stuttering of the image. Motion Flow totally eliminates this and is really fun to watch a train fly across the screen and turn Motion Flow on and off and see how it works in real time. Lens shift allows you to move the image up and down or left and right on your screen with zero picture degradation. This is incredibly important if you do not hang your projector perfectly centered on your screen. You can actually be off by several inches and still perfectly fill your screen using lens shift. We actually produced an installation video recently of a home theater we did where the projector was actually way off and we utilized all of Sony's ability to adjust both height-wise and horizontally to produce the perfect picture. If you're interested in seeing an example of that in an attic, go check it out on audioadvice.com. Every projector has a specification for range of distances it can be from your screen to properly fill the screen. I love the fact that the great lens on the Sony projectors gives you a lot of placement flexibility. While there are some sweet spots we help our customers find, the range is very wide compared to the competition. If you're designing a new theater and are trying to figure out where to place the projector and speakers and how many chairs will fit in your room, check out our free home theater design tool at audioadvice.com where you can put in your room dimensions and see in real time what's possible. The 1025 also has input lag reduction that you can turn on for gaming. As you might imagine, there's some trade-off in motion enhancement and color processing, but it's a great feature that you can turn on and off. The VW1025 also has Sony's Digital Focus Optimizer. All round lenses have a tiny bit more distortion as you near the edge of the lens. Sony uses digital technology to keep the picture on the outer edges of your screen just as crisp as those in the dead center. After living with a VW1025 in my theater, I guess the best recommendation I can give is that my next step is to buy it and keep it in my theater. 
Obviously, getting the settings right is critical for getting the most out of this projector. If Audio Advice is installing your system, we will calibrate it ourselves and do all of the calculations for you. If you purchase your projector from us to install yourself, we actually send you our exclusive tips and tricks setup guide that shows you our preferred settings, including how to optimally set up SDR and HDR for the best picture. Yes, the VW1025 is an expensive projector. However, if you have the funds available and enjoy watching movies, sports, or other content, this is arguably the best projector on the market under 50K. If you have any questions at all, give us a call or chat with us at audioadvice.com or stop by one of our Charlotte or Raleigh showrooms. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to be the first to get more home theater and home audio content. Thanks for watching.